This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Cold War era Latvian padlock. Now, what originally drew me to this lock was the really unique design of the lock body. It appears to have been made for the sole purpose of accepting these little mini rim cylinders. And I'm not entirely sure why that is. If you could remove or replace those rim cylinders, it might make sense. But if I look at this lock, the construction appears to be a clamshell design that's held together permanently by these four pins distributed around the lock body. So it doesn't look like you can remove that cylinder. Equally confusing is the fact that we do have such a large cylinder in there, far larger than most padlock cylinders, yet there's only a three pin lock in there. If we look at these keys, you can see pretty clearly that there are just three cuts. So a very inefficient use of space. The locking mechanism is something that is not strange, but, but certainly not common either. We have a small notch that's machined out of the end of the shackle. And then if we look deep down in that shackle hole, we can see a small bolt that slides in from the side to trap the end of the shackle. So assuming that bolt is not too thin, and it's hard to tell just by looking down there. It's probably a pretty robust design and certainly one that can't be shimmed very easily. I do have some of the original paperwork that came with this lock, which I think is very interesting. We have the name of the company that made it, which is Auto Electro Pribor. I apologize for my butchering of the Russian language. But roughly translated, that means that this was a company that made auto electronic equipment. And if we see this symbol right here, again on the padlock and on the keys, that is taken from the name of the company, AEP Auto Electro Pribor. It also indicates that it was made in Riga, which is the capital and largest city of Latvia. It contains a, an excellent description of the lock, a lock hanging with a cylindrical mechanism. Then we have when this lock was made, which best I can read is November 4th of 1977. And then we also have the price, two rubles, 40 kopeck. That price is also noted on the back of this lock, you can see, two rubles, 40 kopeck. And that's actually something pretty common on locks that were made under communist regimes, certainly in the Soviet Union. And if you think about it, it does make sense that they would put it on there. It's not like these are going to be sent to a store which has any discretion about setting the price. We have a command economy. That price is probably set by some governmental board. There's no reason not to put it on there permanently. So what we're gonna do is see what it takes to pick into this little three pin Latvian lock. So we're gonna use some bottom of the keyway tension on a, a pretty paracentric little keyway, but certainly one that we were, we're going to have any trouble getting into. And I'm gonna use an 18,000 standard hook. Okay, one is binding. I think we got him set. Two is loose. Three is binding. Got to click out of him. Let's should just leave us two. One, two, there we go. And I think we have it open. So it appears to be, or feels like, three standard pins. I'm guessing this is something that could be raked very easily as well. Let's try it with a couple different rakes. Hmm. This might be too thick. There we go, we got it open with that. Let's try something a little bit thinner. Maybe this city, city rake in 18 thousandths. There we go, that slides in a lot easier and opens up. Okay, so no surprise, three standard pins, as we, we would suspect, very easy to pick open, but certainly a very interesting lock and one that I am very happy to have in my collection. So that's all I have for you today on this Cold War era Latvian padlock. If you do have any questions or comments about it, please leave them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe, and as always, have a nice day. Thank you.